There we go. So that way you can get a copy. Again, it will be later tonight when I get that copy in there, as well as the copy of today's slides and the handout. So I'll show you how you can get that at the very close to the end. And again, I'll rem remind myself right here to move that up next time. But as we cover this, we are talking about how you can launch your business with customer-focused marketing. Now understand Google has a tremendous amount of tools here for small businesses. Take a look at it because I am a fan of free or small fee. That is the best, especially when cash flow is king and you're launching your business and there are so many ways you can expend money. There is a better way to be able to decrease those expenses, but still get the visibility that you need. And this is who I am. You can find me on Twitter or also an Instagram. And I'm happy to connect with you there. We actually have a free community where I help and actually audit Google business profiles in that free community and help coach people in how they can actually apply this on a step-by-step -step basis if you want to do that. But understand the Google partners who actually invited you have the boots on the ground and the people there to help you do this. That's why they're here. They truly are vested in your success. So please reach out to them and I'll show you them again. Again, Mary, please forgive me for not putting the Estacasita branch there. I should have done that. It's a matter of hitting a simple thing like save. You can tell I'm used to use working in Google tools where you don't have to hit save. It just, you, you, you navigate off and it automatically saves, right? <laughs> so today we're going to be talking about that marketing funnel and the customer journey, how you can reach those prospects and really create awareness because people, if they don't know you exist, they can't do business with you. And not only do you need to exist with an online presence, but they need to find you pretty readily on their mobile device, because this is where we're going first. And if you don't show up in the first 10 organic search results, which means they have to swipe up to look for you, they're not looking for you, you don't exist. It doesn't matter how fabulous you are. If people don't realize you have something that can help them, that's a solution for whatever they're experiencing, they can't do business with you. Then, of course, how you can engage them and influence that consideration, because when they're coming to see you, they may be aware, but then they must consider you. And part of that is looking at your social cred and seeing whether or not you can deliver what you say you can deliver. Of course, then we're looking at conversion because you're going to hear me talk about conversion quite a bit. Those of you with an e-commerce background know what conversion means to you, but conversion truly is a success action that happens on your site that you want. It could be watch a video, download a PDF, fill out the contact form, give money, give their email address, whatever it is that they're doing that you see successful on your site, that's conversion. Now, how you can also build loyalty and advocacy. This is where we talk about really having that personal relationship and tapping into the contact sphere that your customer has. Because if you can borrow from their credibility and they introduce you into their contact sphere of people who know, like, and trust them, that is a great position to be at because you now you shorten that no like and trust building cycle and you have more chance to actually convert and grow your business faster. And as always, I recap with resources too. I will spend a little bit of time with that, but I want to make sure that you get a copy of today's slides and you have plenty of time to be able to ask questions, okay? Now, do know that I keep my presentations and my sessions very interactive. So if you have questions, Find that chat box because you do need to ask questions. This is for you that are here in the room, okay? Not for anybody else just watching on recording. You get to actually make the most of your time and tap into utilizing a Google trainer and somebody with 18 plus years in digital marketing experience as a marketing coach and 14 plus years in international e-commerce. So ask me, all right? The marketing funnel and the customer journey. Let's go. Great marketers don't just make stuff, they make meaning. And the only way you can make meaning is understanding your customer. In fact, our job is to become experts in our customer. That's the heavy lifting that we need to do. Because if our customers do not see themselves in our website, in our story, they don't project and see, wow, they really get me. And they see the walk and the, the trials and tribulations that I'm having, then they're not gonna do business with us because they don't think we can take them to solution. All right, so if you look here, you see Shallon and Sharika, they're the founders of TW Tote. And TW Tote is not an earth shattering invention, but it's something that met a need. When you see that, oh, got a little, uh, little click happy there. There we go. 
what they had is a passion and ideas. A lot of us have that, right? And they have a product people need. They recognize that there was a need there. How many of you already have launched your business? Just let me know in the chat box. I would love to know who already has launched their business. If this is new to you, not to worry. You're going to get some groundwork too. But for those of you who've launched your business, you do understand what it's like to try to go for everybody, anybody, and somebody and try to develop a product that the market has no interest in and no need to. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you, Mandy. Thank you, Shirley. And most of the time, most businesses have minimal marketing knowledge. They are great at what they do. They're passionate technicians, super focused, and their superpower is in that, but not in marketing, which is fine because we can't be everything, right? Jack of all trades, master of none. That's a hard place to be, a hard place to position yourself. So be great at what you do, but now you can apply this and start doing some things yourself and add to your to-do list here of what you want to do or bring somebody in to do this. But now you have the ability to make some good, smart decisions because you're knowledgeable right? So as we talk about marketing, hello, Cynthia. Awesome. It's good to see you again too, Cynthia. You want to create meaning for people. That is what marketing is. It also builds trust and credibility. It's that relationship building because people do business with people they know, like, and trust. It's not just with brands and products that may have drawn them in, but understand when a relationship ceases to be mutually beneficial to both people involved, this happens with friendships and marriages and business, then somebody leaves. And that's the same thing with your customers. If they don't see a mutual benefit, if they don't feel that they're a part of this and important to this, then there is always another competitor who is ready to meet their needs and to become an expert at what they need. So how can you influence those customers along that journey? That's all inclusive into what marketing is. So the marketing funnel is first about awareness. Remember, I say this often, people can't do business with you if they don't know you exist. But once they're aware of you, do they realize you really are great at what you do? If they realize that, now they can consider you. None of us want to do business with somebody who is great before or could have been great. We want, no matter what our budget is, the best of the best of the best, right? So how can we position ourselves for consideration? And then for conversion, that success action that we want that best potential customer to take that will get us closer to our goal that we see as success. And loyalty is very key because we all know that while it takes a tremendous amount of money to get a new customer, if you can keep a happy customer who already went through this process and already knows, likes, and trusts you, so they went through all of this, they already have that and now can tap into their sphere of influence and you can actually get recommendations and third-party endorsements from them, that's a whole lot of credibility without a whole lot of money up front because a lot of the expense happens in the first three steps of the funnel. So how do you reach your customers? That's the first part of the funnel. How are you aware? How do you help them find answers? How are you helping support them through solution, through their situation, whatever that is? And then can you turn them into customers? And not only that, can they become repeat customers? So when you influence that customer journey, this is what it looks like. When you have awareness, you can measure that by looking at how many impressions that you're getting on social and then also within your site or even your email marketing, whatever your tools are for marketing, look at your impressions, look at brand recall. Are people actually to recall and really know the name? You look at your organic search. If you're looking at Google Analytics, which is a free tool that you can connect with your website to let you know how people consume and look through information on your site. This is helping you become an expert in your customer because now you have an understanding of what it is that they actually need and do and find important on your site. So if there's a brand recall, you can see that they're finding information and they're sharing you with other people. And then you also see offline search. So what you're looking for in Google Analytics is you're looking for organic search results, direct search results. So direct search means that somebody actually put and typed in your name of your business to look for you. There's organic search, which means they could have been looking for, let's say, your um um, let's say you're like, uh, and I lost your name already, but with the memorial gifts, um, let's say we're looking for um, remembrance, um, 
gifts. But let's say, you know, now we actually, so that's an organic search. If they found your website, that's what they're doing. They're doing an organic search. But a direct search in your Google Analytics, when you're looking and measuring the insights in your analytics, when you see that people found you by the direct search, that means they typed in your name. So is there brand recall? Also consideration, what actually is included in consideration is you need to look at traffic, store results, if you've gotten any engagement within ads, are people watching the videos? Are they watching them all the way through or do they stop at the halfway point or do they only stay on for the first three seconds? That normally means they were just scrolling and they pressed just too hard, just a little bit too hard. Shirley, thank you, Shirley, for the reminder. It's you with the memorials and gifts business. Thank you, Shirley. I appreciate you jumping in the chat and reminding me. And then of course, are you getting email list signups? This is very important. Now conversion, of course, you're gonna get sales. You're gonna get return on ad spend. You're spending and you're getting. So you spend $5, you make 500, that's good return on ad spend. Is your advertising cost actually bringing in the sales? So is your cost per acquisition of your new customers actually bringing them in and you're getting good lifetime value and average order value of your customer? And are they loyal? Are they subscribing? Are they sharing you? Are they referring? Are they recommending you? Are they leaving reviews? So when we're looking at the first part, the top of that funnel, we're talking about how you can reach prospects. This means you've got to create that awareness. Now, any questions so far before we go any further? I just want to take this moment because I've covered quite a lot already just in understanding the marketing funnel, but I do want to customize this to you, okay? And do understand I will share a copy of the recording Again, later today, and I'll show you how to get that, right? Because I'm not going to just email you like I have in the past. This You have to proactively look at the information here to get a copy of today's slides, okay? So you're going to, my QR code didn't work, so you're going to have to take a screenshot is really what's going to help you get there, okay? All right, no questions? All right, awareness. So how do people currently find your business? I'd love to hear in the chat. How are they finding it? Is it word of mouth? Do people refer you? Do they shout out on Facebook and say, hey, I need help? And people chime in with their recommendations. Is it through advertising? Do you do a lot of expos, trade show marketing, farmer's markets? Okay, so how are people finding you? Or searching online, maybe they don't Google search. It's the big dog. But you know what? There's Bing out there. And I will tell you, I work a lot of times with Bing and Bing Places, which works just like Google Business Profile. And you know what? People search that way because their laptops already come with Bing in, installed and they don't want to change it out. They may not actively want to do that. So how are people finding you? Say Google search, advertising, word of mouth. Awesome. Thank you, Shirley, for sharing. I'd love to hear how other people are getting awareness because first in order to get awareness you have to identify who your customer is really what your business brand is what does it stand for what's that space it takes in people's mind and then also you do have to be online because people can't find you online these days you don't exist. They think that you went under in 2020 when a lot of businesses did. So you do have to have a really good on online presence and show up high in search. This means you need to know your customer, not just their wants and needs, but some of the basics like their demographics, their psychographics. Are they um, you know, busy moms that may have two or three toddler children living in a larger city? Are they rural and more uh, and uh a younger base, but more focused on trying to find out information on travel. Who is your best customer? Okay, so Claire, search and return customers. Oh, return customers, that's golden. Word of mouth is still so valuable. That's why I'm a huge fan of socials because that's word of mouth on steroids. It's just that I like to teach people that always keep in mind that socials can go away. And if they do for any reason, just unpublish, it just could be wild reasons that happens. How are you staying in contact with people when you don't have access to socials? So a lot of people include that in part of their funnel is to capture contact or email information, but also geographically, where are they? And how do they behave? Are they somebody who really has a need and search quite online several times? Or do they are they gonna be somebody who, if you provide subscription, to them. They're just going to continually buy because they're set it and forget it really in their mindset. So if you look here, for example, you're looking at what a customer is and think of who your 10 best customers are. Those of you who've launched your business, think of who those 10 best customers are. Those of you who have not, look to your competitor or your potential competitor. It could be somebody directly in the industry or maybe even something else that's taking away that money who's after that same disposable money that your customer would spend. Like for example, if you were a um, 
putt putt golf center, right? And um, a restaurant, somebody else was a restaurant. They're, they're after the same money. It's entertainment. We eat for entertainment. So uh, understand that they're after the same spend. So getting to know, even though you may not have opened your putt-putt golf center, you can still look at restaurants as potential opportunities for who could be a good um, potential customer. And you can go read the reviews. This is what I highly encourage you to do in your competitive research is if you don't have your own reviews, of course, read your own reviews because these are your actual customers talking to you. And we want to listen to our customers, right? Because we'd like for them to stay forever and refer everybody that's just like them over and over again, right? So think about this. If you are looking at a competitor, read their reviews, look and see what they're really good at in their own words, because those are the words that people are using when they're searching or they're asking for that solution. And also understand that it'll show where there are gaps, where your competitor is not performing well, where maybe that could be a sweet spot for you. So in this instance, Metro Michaela, we know a little bit about her, her education, what she enjoys, where she spends her time and intention. Look looking at and she likes to shop locally. So we really have a chance to get her know her. And I encourage you to do that. Now, can you serve anybody, everybody and somebody? Absolutely. But understand that it takes a tremendous amount of time, energy and money to get that visibility and you will run out of cash flow before then. In fact, the saying that I share with people is if you try to target everybody, anybody and somebody, you'll get their second cousin, nobody. It's too much. And we don't have that kind of energy and effort. Focus very clearly. And if you get anybody, everybody and somebody, they're just gravy. Okay. But if you can get a hundred of those best customers that do best for you, that give you the most pleasure and profit, that's great. We've all worked with customers that we don't like. And there may be others who we have more pleasure and profit than those that are just ones that we justify with dollar signs. We also need to brand our business. So that's not just your logos and colors and the graphics, but the tone and voice of your brand. Really know what that is and what you provide and how you help your customer. So in this, we really need to create an identity of who they are, what they want, and what they, they are really, really wanting from us that we provide and that we stand for. This is really important in all of our communication. You first have to extract what your brand is in order to express and exude it. That's part of the branding process. So have you extracted that or are you just at the surface level looking at your graphics and looking at your color and not really that voice? So now you've got a variety Variety of people and working on all of your different communication from social to email to SMS, that's text marketing, and they all have a different tone. So you're coming across as confusing, or is it nice, streamlined, and consistent? Because understand, consistency builds trust. So who is it you serve? What do you actually offer to them? How do you help them and make a difference in their life? And what makes you so amazing and unique and different? What's your promise? What are you actually focused on with your mission? So a brand positioning statement is great to start with. If you don't have one, spend some time doing this. This is the foundation that you lead, you actually need and you lead with in your brand voice. So this is why I'm spending time doing this part because I know how important it is and I know how many people shortcut this and just look for the bright shiny object. And then what happens is then you're on really inconsistent ground and you do have to put a lot of time and money in order to be able to stay on that inconsistent ground. So who's your audience? What's their challenge that they're actually focused on? What's the name of your company? What's the product or differentiator? What you makes you so amazing or what it is that you're actually doing to solve? And what is it the promise that you have that you're giving to them? Because a lot of time we talk about features. Oh, our promise is, is that we have great Google Sheets. No, no, that is a feature. The promise is making it easy for you to calculate numbers and make decisions in your business fast. Okay, so what's your promise? So in this instance for TW Tote, what they're doing is they're creating a really nice high-end lunch bag because that was their need. He was going to lunch at the office and seeing that everybody was coming with a hodgepodge of, of um, old graveyard um, lunch boxes from their kiddos. So instead of that, he was looking for a more high end and that's what he and Sharika actually put together. And so they work with working professionals who need a stylish and functional lunch bag. TW Tote provides fashionable, insulated, vegan leather totes because everyone 
deserves a luxurious and functional lunch bag the entire family can use. You see how they fit that into those, those areas? So for you, this is that brand positioning template if you want to take a quick screenshot of it. So you can use that and apply what you've learned today because understand knowledge is not powerful until it is applied. So once you have that in place, now when you go to social directories and to online marketplaces, you really know who you're focused on. You've got your target audience and you know what it is that you do so amazingly well for them. You can also build your website. I encourage you to do that and really own it and control that. There are so many CMS systems, so that stands for Content Management Systems, Squarespace, Wix, WooCommerce, Shopify. Those are CMSs, Content Management Systems, and there are great ones out there that can help you, and this can help you grow your business. We do an entire different webinar about how to make sure that website is performing well for you, but you can also utilize the free tools you have available to you. Understand you can use a Google business profile, so you can do that and use this profile to get good visibility, and in search and on maps, it helps you control what Google and what the public sees about you, which is truly what we want because that's where the lion's share of search happens in Google. And we want people to be able to find us when they're looking for our, pro our, our product, service, or solution, right? All right, so any questions before we go further here? We're gonna talk about engaging and influencing for consideration. Remember, this is customized for you to feel free to ask there. I'm gonna go ahead and go on. How can they evaluate your brand? And what are they doing in consideration? Can they find the answers with you? Or is it a long process? Do they have to go through several screens? One of the tools that I like to help, especially websites, e-commerce sites particularly, is to help them make sure that they're looking at their search report because a lot of times people go into a website and our homepage of our websites is just a hot mess junk drawer of everything that we think somebody would want to know. And so now they end up searching. So they just use the little search bar and they try to search there. And now they don't find it or it takes forever to find it or they get the horrible 404 they can't find that page at all that doesn't exist i actually pull that report for businesses and show them how to do that because now people are telling you what matters to them and what they're looking for so it's important we use their own words that's how you can actually take advantage of google's algorithm is becoming relevant that's the first part of the algorithm formula for google is how relevant are you to people who are searching how well do you match their words not yours we're not our best customer we don't people don't search in industry speak in fact we see that now with chat gpt as we search with ai they are just doing full sentences it's no longer just keywords and key phrases it's a whole conversation that's happening so do you listen and learn do you have ways to listen and learn do you actually know and communicate value to them do you understand what's valuable to them not you not what you think is valuable what's valuable to them do you really know that or are you just doing that in your head because it's okay to have conversations with your customers when you're not just re-upping or reselling them something and then also have you developed those relationships because people will quit businesses before they'll quit relationships if they feel like there's a tie and relationship with you they're less likely to leave and in fact they're very much more an advocate and helpful in giving feedback and information to you so know what their pain points are, understand what the challenges are, even with your product. I was working with a customer service team this morning and just explaining to them that all of these complaints are just requests in another format. So this is an opportunity for you to address these complaints. Yes, you cannot change the actual engineering of the way this product is created, but you can change how they interact with it to make it a good positive experience for them and get to the results that they need because you know how to do this. You have already figured this out and or have listened to customers who have told you how they uniquely have addressed and solved this for themselves and how your product is a part of that solution. Find out what they're searching actually for online. So use their own words. So when you find out what they're searching for, you know, people do go into Google search. They either go in the address bar here at the top or here right in the search bar. But if you toggle all the way to the bottom of search, so just scroll and look at the bottom, and actually now because there's continuous scroll, right? We don't have pages anymore. You see that happening on mobile. It's just a continuous scroll. Then what you're going to do is you're going to look for, it's like these little grayish um, bubbles that look like buttons. So it's not even green highlighted anymore. It's these grayish bubbles, but that is letting you know related searches and related searches are what people are searching for right now actively. These are active 
very popular searches, which means this is a chance for you to actually show up and be in people's visibility if you use those same words too. Let's see, can you use a Google My Business if it's only an online business? Absolutely, Shirley, you can use, it's not called Google My Business anymore. That was changed about two years ago, but it's a Google business profile. And how you can use that if you're just online is really think about what this tool is for. The power of this tool is local. It is hyper-local focus. I know that doesn't make sense for online businesses, but think about it. Have you ever brought a product or delivered a product at a coffee shop, at a chamber event, at church, on the way to your kiddo's school, in the parking lot, at the daycare center, when you went to taekwondo for your kiddos, there when you were in the waiting room for that, at your doctor's, if you've delivered it to anybody at all locally, you're a local business use your Google business profile. You can still show there locally and really build your social cred there by getting at least 60 five-star reviews. Now, Shirley, you told me you were an e-commerce business. So 60 is for a personal service business um, to be able to even compete with everybody nationwide. But in order for you to compete as an e-commerce business, you need 120 gold star, five gold star reviews. So five star reviews, 120 of them. And understand if people don't put any text underneath, so it's just the stars, that doesn't count. You need 120 with text in order to compete nationwide. That's a minimum for e-commerce shops. So what I do is I enter your address if you work from home. Yes, you do. And what you'll do, Shirley, is you go through, it asks questions and it will ask you this key question. Yes, you want people to come in and see you, which means you want foot traffic. You want your address on Google search and maps if you do that. So say yes. But then there's a second part to that. You could say no, which no means, and it explains it there. No, you deliver products and services to your customer's location. That's what you do online or in person. You're delivering. So you say no. You deliver products and services, so you don't want your address to show up on maps. You can show that you serve the local area, which I encourage you to do by putting zip codes in, because again, remember, this tool is local focused. There are other tools to reach nationwide, but now you can use this and control what Google search and maps sees about you and what's out there, okay? Google Trends is a great way to do this. You know, Marla, we talked about this several times and I'm actually launching something in our little community about how to use Google Trends even more because I've really taken that deep dive. It's one of the unsung heroes of Google tools and it's 100% free. So what Google Trends does, it tells you what people are searching for right now, more than just what I was showing you in that search. You can go into Google Trends and really take that deeper dive into what it is that people are looking for. You have a chance to actually now share Share that in content. You can look and see what they're finding your competitors with. You can see what matters most to them. And you can even decide your blog post, your YouTube short, your re Instagram reels, your TikToks around this, because this is something that is where the attention is of your customers. And when they're, they're actually searching with intent, they're a more aware and more focused. You can also find out what you might need to educate and inspire them with, where you might need additional research and they may need research to really understand because this is a new topic for them and you're the expert. So you can help them avoid any pitfalls, which if you do that, they'll see you more as a trusted advisor than just somebody selling their your product or service. And you can then establish that expertise, which is really critical because if people see you as an expert, they really will come to you with what they need and they, you, they can actually help bring you other customers by referral, referring and recommending you. So now once you have content that you know is being searched, so it matters, you are fishing where the fish are. I'm a big fan of that because I, it takes tremendous amount of time, energy, and money to get people to look over here when all their eyeballs are here. So if you can know what their eyeballs are on and repurpose that for you, you can use that in social media, in email, in YouTube. YouTube shorts do really, really well. Understand that YouTube is the number two search engine in the world. And it is evergreen. So people search there and it shows up in organic search. So in a, an organic search result, it's a great way to be visible. You could do a podcast. Now, if you've not done this, for those of you who are doing YouTube, voice search is a thing, right? It's audio search. People do a lot of that. So think about that. If you do, let me just take you through a scenario because I actually walked an e-commerce business through this. I said, you do Amazon Lives. They did Amazon Lives. I said, why don't you restream that everywhere? Use Restream IO and restream that to Facebook Live, Instagram Live. You're on TikTok. You're going everywhere. Let's just do it. And then once you do that, get a recording of it. 
get that recording, put it into snippets. You can use that for your TikToks and your reels. Don't worry about having to re-record it. Just do little snippets. You can use Munch app. It's an AI and it'll snip it up for you in a matter of seconds. And you just have to tell it what platform it's for. Then you can, um, after you do that, what you can do then is strip uh, the, the audio off it. So you're basically taking an MP4 file and you're translating it to an MP4. P3. Do I have that the right way? Yeah, I have it the right way. So you're just taking the audio of it. Now you put the audio on Spotify and Apple Tunes. You can upload it there. Um, and once you've done that, now you've got all that information on audio search. You're getting every place that you need to be and meeting the customer where they feel the most comfortable. Of course, it's better if you know where your best customers spend time, right, too. But if you think there's the opportunity for that, you can repurpose all that. Now take those transcripts, snippet that up, and you can use those into Twitter threads. You can have it written, rewritten in AI and use little sound bites of it. Ask AI to do a quick Twitter thread for you or quick sound bites and make it funny. You can do all of that and utilize that everywhere, plus online publishing and your website. It's a great way for you to be able to shortcut and repurpose what you're doing. Okay. Remember, though, we are not selling. Nobody wants to be sold. We all want to buy, but nobody wants to be sold. So how can you help people you're sharing with them? You are assisting them with either frequently asked questions. Make sure you upload those into your Google business profile because there's a function in there that does cover that. You also can give them some comparisons. Maybe they need to exactly know, hey, this is not apples to apples. And this is why you really are helping them before they make <clears throat> a costly mistake in time or money. You might even have demo videos. Unboxing videos do really well. Four out of five videos on YouTube that are viewed consistently, see, consistently are unboxing videos. It could be that you're doing webinars, teaching them how to use your product or how to use and connect it or how to even repurpose it once they're done using your product. There's a great group I saw they have, I mean, they realize their product life cycle is only about four years where people use it and then they don't need it anymore because they're dealing with a child that's growing up. So they actually created <clears throat> Facebook and Discord groups for them where people can trade it with somebody else who is just coming in being a new mom who, um, who doesn't have the funds to do this. So they're a part of that whole conversation as the experts and they're actively involved in understanding their customers and prospective customers. Plus you can also give out samples. That's great to do too. And if they'll do an unboxing for a, you know, for a trade of samples or they'll do a review for you where they're doing a video or audio review or even a written, hey, this is what we liked about this. You will have to say, you know, you gave them a sample to just be clear and transparent. But at the same time, this gives people some other insight that's not just you beating your chest saying that you're amazing because we can do that all day long, but it doesn't have the same kind of credibility that somebody else does. We also then can now work at developing those relationships because now that we exactly know our customers and what they need, we can help them solve those problems. We can really have those conversations with them and evaluate. Remember what I said, when somebody, when a relationship is not mutually beneficial to both people involved, somebody leaves. So when you think about Tracy and Danny, if you ever saw Shark Tank, this is where I first saw them and then became introduced to them later, but they are the creators of Wicked Good Cupcakes. So they had a great bakery, they were selling cupcakes, but you know, you try to transport and ship cupcakes across the world and you just get smushed in messy cupcakes. So what they did is they started baking their cupcakes in a jar and it became Wicked Good Cupcakes. They deliver in a jar, still intact and such a great way for you to build for, to build a relationship, you know, with cupcakes that you don't have to worry about them being terrible when they get there. They're there, they're nice, they're intact. So with their business, they were taking it to new heights and they were wanting to know more about their customer, but they also want to identify what they needed in their site. You know, what is it that really customers were looking for? How could they make that experience better for them? One of the favorite things that I love that I saw them do was to do an email marketing campaign where when their customer got their cupcakes, then it was, you know, shoot a, shoot a quick video about enjoying your cupcakes and say, hey, I got you a deal 10% off of this and then send that out and put all your customers email or your contact email addresses there so they can also share and partake. It was a great word of mouth campaign through email marketing. And it really did pave that way to conversion. 
All right, any questions before we go to the next part, conversion? How can we do a, get them to do a success action, right? That we see getting us closer to that goal. So how does that happen? How do they become customers from just prospects that are interested, kicking those tires? How do we get them to do business with us? So we need to actually know what is it that they need to do and we need to tell them. We are all busy, inundated with about 12,400 messages on any given day. We get distracted with little Slack messages, pings, texts coming in, all of that's happening. So when we can give people a call to action, learn more, buy now, find out more, watch this, sign up for the list, give us a call. If you do all of those things, now you're telling them and they don't have to worry about expending a lot of time, energy, and money to connect those dots. Do you also streamline the purchase process? Do you make it easy for them? I was working with an e-commerce company yesterday, Shirley, and I could see, I mean, I was looking at their Google Analytics and their average order value is about $245 per order. I could see that um, the cart, there's, they weren't having much cart abandonment, about 33%, which means cart abandonment, everyone, is when people leave stuff in their cart and then they just go away. They just abandon the cart. We've seen it physically in stores, but this happens online all the time. So they knew if they could gain back those people, they could earn the business, but they were only having about 33% abandon the cart. But what they were having, I saw, was abandoning the checkout. They were having 70%. So you got everybody who's put everything in their cart. They put all their information, their shipping information and everything in. And the last part is now it's time to put payment in. And 70% were leaving at that point. That's called abandoned checkout. So my question to them was, is there something popping up on mobile that is preventing them from doing that? Is there something that gives them pause or concern about putting their credit card information or payment information when they get to that? Take a look at that. And they actually found out there was a pop-up that was blocking everybody, that it was so big on mobile, you couldn't see the X to get out of it. So they were giving up. Okay, but that was the telltale sign is to look at where they're abandoning things. So are you streamlining it, making it easy, or is it hard for them to do business with you? You want to make it easy for them to buy from you. And then where can you get them or what actions can you get them to do? These are known as conversion actions. So any of these actions actually lead them closer to the goal to doing business with you. They are actually now self-disclosing that they have an interest in what you provide. Now, those timely calls to action, they could also be about discounts or exclusive deals. Maybe you need to learn a little bit more. I hear a lot of business people tell me that nobody buys their product without a demonstration, so there might need to be a webinar. They sell it all day long when they can demonstrate it, but trying to do that without the visual demonstration doesn't seem to do well. So they find different ways to be able to provide this. Okay. It could be that they just need to see more testimonials. You know, they just need some more confidence that you are truly who you say you are and your product or service does what it says it does. And then of course it just could be cost. You know, shipping is pretty expensive and we're all used to the Amazon factor where everything is free shipping. So everybody may be looking for that or looking for that opportunity that, hey, if I just visit here for a moment and pull away, maybe I'll get a little pop-up giving me a little bit of a discount before I actually do a purchase. Understand that the more steps that there are in the process, the more cumbersome it becomes. Remember, they're all on four and a half inch screens trying to get things done and life and other messages are happening here. Do you make them sign in to check out or do you give them the opportunity to check out and not feel like their inbox is going to be just flooded with a bunch of ads and promotions? And do you provide value added? So I see a lot of people who, for example, will have a couple of their products on Amazon. They may not have their whole line, but they will bring, actually, they'll, they'll start it there. They'll put QR codes within the actual package to try to bring them over to their site. And on their site, if they buy from their site, they actually get added value, con concierge services, and discounts because they bought from the site. Because now, you know, Amazon is very closed loop as far as attribution. They're just launching that attribution and they give a little bit of it away, but there's nothing like you having all the information about your own customers. The way you can understand how your customers are consuming that information is Google Analytics, which I told you about earlier. This you attach to your site 100% free and it lets you know how people are actually moving through your site, where they came from, 
Where do they go afterwards? Do they go uh, check out your social cred and your reviews? Or do they go shopping at your competitors? And it'll give you the opportunity now to make better business decisions about what will help them buy from you or do business with you or do that success action from you. You can also use online ads. I highly encourage you to do this. In fact, you can use Google ads now. Just connect it for free to your site, connect Google Analytics, connect Google ads. Don't put your credit card in. Use the free keyword planner there. Don't pay for any keyword planner tools. Just use the free one there and start learning exactly the words that people are searching and using when they want to know, go do or buy. And the last part is just building that loyalty right? So building loyalty is very important because these are people who already had relationship and know, like, and trust with us. So what can you do to help them help you by referring their friends? So they actually help everyone around because their friends or family member may be struggling with something and you're the best solution. You're looking for somebody, but you don't know how to get to them. And here's somebody who has great cred, with people who may be great customers for you. So do you keep them loyal or do you consider the moment they buy, that's it, the end of the relationship because it's really just the beginning. So loyalty programs, connection programs, email marketing programs that stay in good constant conversation with them are really important for you to engage and that gets your customer to advocate. So stay in touch because understand that after 14 days when we don't stay in touch with people, especially people that we consider ourselves close with, you start losing the relationship touch. I'm not saying to stay in conversation with your customers every 14 days, but have a plan of how you stay connected. Do provide good, this is good customer service, that has as a given that has to be everybody can be me mediocre or okay but when they're outstanding that's when we'll tell other people we won't tell you them when we're just okay ask them for feedback and show that you listen to the feedback respond to your reviews respond to customers because people don't want to do business with a business that does not listen right we don't need that we want to be valued we want to be heard are your customers valued and heard by you can they see that outwardly themselves? Not you thinking that they are in your head, but what do they see? Are you improving and then also giving them some delights and different things. We just did that for a set of customers who wanted a bunch of changes to one of the products that, that a, a business had. And then what was nice is they were looking at making those changes and they brought those customers in to actually talk to the engineers and have a call about what it is that they like and didn't like. And then they were sent a sample to be a test to really see if the, what the engineers were thinking and what the customers wanted were really meshing together and coming together in the product. That's a great way to delight them because now they feel so important and valued and heard. Do you have offers for them? Do you recognize who your VIPs are? Because that's important too. Some, sometimes, you know, when you know who your VIP is and that they're going to buy five times from you, then when they're at that fifth time, you can generate an email or connection with when you're just saying, hey, I just want to know how you're doing. I'd love to just know how you're doing and how you use this. And I can't tell you how much I love and appreciate the fact that you do business with us. We as small businesses have that great strength to be able to reach to our customers where other businesses are still trying to figure out their brand voice. We have a voice. We can reach to our customers and we know them that intimately. We can also provide perks and personal programs that truly address our customers. And then we can encourage them to leave those reviews, let people know there's no better time to ask for a review when everybody's already excited and happy with you. We can have referral programs that do reward them. We can share those testimonials and we can also share them on social. Anybody who's been in any of my sessions knows that if you tag me on Twitter or on any social, really in Instagram too, I will share you in my stories and get that visibility to you. I will happily do that because I know you're a small business trying to reach that best customer. And if I happen to have them in my audience, I would love for them to know that you exist. So understand reviews are critical because that is third party validation. People look to that now. They make decisions. In fact, 84% will not make a decision or make a decision to not do business with somebody who doesn't have any reviews because they think that you could be bogus, fly by night, fishing company that really isn't a real company. So remember, when you reply that publicly everybody is seeing this. So you're going to have trolls sometimes, just ignore them. There's people who have way too much time on their hands and you don't have the ability to respond to them. But when you see real customers commenting, you can address them. 
real unhappy customers and dress them too and let them know that's not the experience that we want for you. I'd like to learn more without jeopardizing your privacy. Would you contact me here? And you can leave your contact information there on how they can best reach you to have an offline real conversation and turn them from somebody who could be a potential enemy to an advocate. So what is an advocate? These are customers. These are also team members and your partners. I actually like to work with partners and explain to them, hey, you've been helping me here. I could really use your help here. How could I help you as well? And then you can also work with influencers and affiliates. So affiliates are people who may put a link or information about you on their site or in their email marketing or any other marketing that they're doing. They may share you and they get a little um, spiff. So they get a little bit of percentage for doing that. Influencers could be major influencers like celebrity, but most, I say most businesses do well with micro influencers. So this could be a customer who bought from you six times and most customers only buy from you three times. This is somebody who could influence and in their own very authentic voice, share you and be able to support you and be seen as somebody who now is a real person who has actually sampled your product, service, or solution. So remember what I said at the very beginning, knowledge is not powerful until it is applied. So for you, what are you going to take and apply now? Let me know in the question box or the chat box is what this is called. You can see old habits getting in. So go ahead and let me know in the chat box or write it down at least for yourself because it's more important that you have an action plan and this just wasn't 60 minutes of you being entertained, right? Because we need to be able to grow our business. That's what we want to do in order for 2023 to be successful for us. So it could be that you're going to focus on awareness and consideration, and you're looking and answering these questions, and maybe you're doing that by really fi figuring out what here needs to be figured out in these bullet points, okay? Because these are key to the first part of the top of the funnel, awareness and consideration. Or it could be that you're looking at the bottom, the middle of the funnel and the bottom of the funnel. How could you help them with conversion and then loyalty? What are the bullet point items that you're going to actually add to your to-do list? I see follow-up. That's awesome. Follow-up is critical because a lot of people just get busy and it's not because they aren't interested in your product, service, or solution. It's just they were distracted or it's just not now. It doesn't mean never. It means maybe not now, or maybe they're confused. They don't understand. Absolutely. Post more online so you can be in front of those customers. So know where they're at, understand where they spend time and what matters most to them, Cynthia. Absolutely. Great ways. I'd love to see that everybody's looking to apply what they learn. You can also go to Google's channel to be able to see more. I'm not going to talk really about these too much because um, I know there's some changes in these different certificates, but I do want to let you know, and again, Mary, please forgive me with the humble branch, the Esta Casita um, branch of the library that I did not put you on there, that I put REI twice. That's my fault, operator error. But I wanted to say thank you so much to the partners here, because this means the world to me that you shared me with your community and that I've had a chance to be just a small part. Hopefully these business successes understand my favorite part of the day is to have celebratory dances um, online. So this is the little dance gifts with people who are telling me, you know what, Maria, you're right. I posted for one month straight. I went ahead every other day, posted my Google business profile, and I just got the report back that I increased my visibility by 159%. That was somebody yesterday. So I got to do one of those little um, um, celebratory virtual dances with them. But for you, what is it that it's going to do for you? Because I love to celebrate those. Those mean a lot to me. Understand, I started my small business a little over 20 years ago, and I was the lone ranger other than I finally found a business incubator who helped me and showed me the value of other people's experiences. And that's what I love about our Google partners here, especially the ones you see me listing out or you saw on the list, because they are vested in your success. They want you to be able to springboard from their experience and the services that they have for you. That's why they're here. That's why they asked me to come. And then understand if you want a copy of today's slides, just take a screenshot here. Apologize, this is a horrible link that has no customization to it, but you will find a copy of the slides, the handout and the recording, but understand today's slides and recording will not show up there till tonight, just because it's me here and I will get all of that done once Zoom gets me a copy of this actual recording and this goes out, okay? So I just wanted to let you know that. That's how you get a copy, Cynthia.
Perfect timing. I didn't even set that up myself, right? So I'm going to go ahead and go off of, uh, let me see, off of recording right now. Make sure link is different here. So I'm going to 